Hello all, my name is Tyler. And I'm John. And together we are DeLone Rigging Solutions, or DRS for short. All right, let's talk about operating a counterweight system that's a double purchase system. A double purchase system typically refers to a system that has the locking rail elevated off of the stage floor in order to allow wing space underneath the locking rail. The downside of that is that in order to accomplish an elevated locking rail, the battens still have full travel, but the arbor only has half the distance available to it, or whatever distance from the elevated rail to the head block. So the load lines on the batten come over to the arbor, come over to the head block, down under the shiv on the top of the arbor, and dead off at the head beam. So if you have 500 pounds of load on the batten, 500 pounds of tension in the load lines, if you do a what we call a, a free body diagram, that would show two up pulls of that 500 pounds. Translating to it takes a thousand pounds of down pull in the arbor, either in the form of counterweight or of you pulling the arbor down to lift that 500 pounds of load. At the end of the day, you still have the same distance to pull here, and when the load is balanced, you have the same, you have a balanced load. So operating the lines is very similar to a single purchase system. The biggest difference is that because your counterweight is double of your batten weight, you have more inertia. So the system is just a little stiffer, a little clumsier to, to start and stop uh, smoothly because you're dealing with a heavier counterweight. In terms of the operating lines, in order to have the operating line travel match the speed of the batten, the operating lines are also two to one against the arbor. So they're dead off at the locking rail. They go up through the shiv in the bottom of the arbor, back down to the either block, back up to the head block, over the head block, through a similar shiv like this on the top of the arbor, and then up and dead off at the head beam, resulting in you have actually three ropes in sight here at the locking rail. You only care about the outside two. They're the only two that have any operational value to you. That third leg there is the dead end of the line and you don't have any reason or, or uh, several reasons not to pull on that rope. On the outside two lines, very similar to a single purchase system, you can still go with the inner rope to take it out, the outer rope to bring it in, as far as which rope is going to do what. Because the inner rope is going to pull the arbor down, taking the load up or out. The outer rope is going to pull the arbor up and the load down or in. Operationally, very similar to a single purchase system, we're going to grip the two lines together uh, when we're ready to run a line. Uh, we're going to feel if there seems to be any, any abnormal tension in the rope. If the, rope, if the load were out of balance, one of these ropes would be tighter than the other. So if, if both ropes feel about the same and, and not you know, stretched like a violin string or something, uh, then we're going to grip it and open the lock and gradually we can let that loose to feel that it's balanced and then to bring it in pull the outside rope to take the batten out pull the inside rope noticing that i am just talking about the outside two ropes i'm ignoring the dead end of the operating line i don't need to do anything with it i'm going to work with these two that are closest to me another factor to think about with a double purchase system is that it does have an idler block that will raise and lower uh, as you, as in order to keep tension on the rope. And as in a single system, 
you can use that either block to help you get tension or help you get slack in the operating line. Uh, if you want to get slack in it to take wraps, you can raise that idler block to get slack. In a double purchase system, the idler blocks tend to be bigger, heavier, and clumsier. So it's not quite as handy to get slack in a rope as it is with a single purchase system. In this particular system, they have installed a lift cable on the back of the idler block to help lift it. So if you kick it, as in the single purchase system, and lift at the same time from the back, you can get and you can take wraps, similarly to what you do in a single purchase system. But it's just heavier, larger, not quite as, as uh, convenient to use. While you can run an out of balance load with wraps, uh, as I prefer to do on a single purchase system, it's also common, and it's in many cases better, to use a stick in the operating line if you have an out-of-balance load. Now you can tighten that wrap to hold the load, or you can loosen the wrap to let the load slide. This, is, this load is pretty balanced, so it's not going to go anywhere, even though I've got most of the wraps off. Uh, another thing to talk about when you use a stick is that that stick holding the load depends on that stick staying in place. There's not much to stabilize it. Um, it's not something you can walk away from and ignore. You need to tend that stick. You need to stay with it. Because if, for instance, they're loading scenery on the batten or taking the scenery off of the batten and they bounce the batten, then that could bounce your operating lines, which can make your stick come loose. All right, so to recap, in a double purchase system, your operating line deads off at the rail, goes up over the, the bottom of the arbor, over the shiv in the bottom of the arbor, through the idler, back over the head block, back down and through the shiv on the top of the arbor, all the way back up and deads off at the head beam, resulting in three ropes at the rail. Operationally, you only care about the outside two. I think that uh, about wraps it up as far as the, the basic differences and some, some operational hints on running a double purchase system. Some of the, I, I touched on earlier, but some of the advantages of the double purchase system, or the primary advantage, is that it allows the rail to be elevated and wing space on the stage underneath the locking rail. Uh, the downside being, the counter weight is double of the batten weight, so you have more inertia and a little more, uh, 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 takes a little more muscle and a little more uh, finesse to start and stop load smoothly because of the additional inertia. All right, there you have a double purchase system. Please remember that DeLong Rigging Solutions one-shot train videos are meant as general overviews. Every system is different. Every venue has different procedures. All statements made make certain assumptions about systems and venue similarities. Nothing can replace on-site training with a qualified individual. If ever you have a question or concern about rigging, do not hesitate to reach out to us or another qualified vendor in your area.